Okay, so we have game two up on the board here. I see a couple draw cards jump out to me straight away. Wolf and Torturer. Think about which one to buy first because... Okay, so my default thinking, which is bad, I shouldn't really have a default thinking, is village draw and find something to do with the draw, right? So that was my default. I see walled village. I see some draw cards. Hooray! We have the classic, right? So I think Wolf is better because the Torturer you could ignore. Remake is around, which I'm going to open with here, to just kill the curses entirely. There's even an apprentice to deal with the curses as they come in. Once you're thin enough, one apprentice could just chop one, remake two, and that's three curses. And you know, by that point, your opponent invested $15 into torturers that don't do anything except plus three cards. So. And also empty a pile, which is significant. But anyways, I think Wolf is better. It gets you the plus buy, a little bit extra draw actually. Uh, all around nice card, a little bit more stable to play with wolves, honestly. Now, there is something to be said about the double tactician deck here, it is possible, and it doesn't really um, rely on too many villages. There's only one stack of villages, so that seemed to that seemed to me to be very crucial. It limits how many action cards you can play here. But the double tactician deck doesn't really rely too much on the wall villages. You just want a stack of conspirators and a handful of patricians, and you're good to go. Honestly, you could get all villages to play maybe a Jester, maybe a Wolf, maybe a Horse Traders, but you're not heavily reliant on the double tactician, on the villages and a double tactician deck, so. Anyways, I go for Remake and Silver against my opponent's Patrician and Apprentice. I expected uh, the 2-5 there to go Patrician Remake. He goes for the Apprentice, which is reasonable. I thought, I was like, okay, you could trash things with that, that's no problem. 5 for me here, again, just weighing my options between the wolf and the torture and i think the wolf is better so we go for the wolf opening here i'll get a couple of villages wolves villages wolves money and we'll see how things go from there i expect the village split to be crucial crucial so my opponent uh, he trashes an estate with the apprentice that'll make get into five easier for him in his subsequent shuffle uh, he doesn't get to five here though he gets four Goes for a Conspirator a bit early on the Conspirator, honestly. I, I thought it was a bit early. He needs to drop Patrician Apprentice Conspirator for that to activate. But anyway, he has a wall village now, so that'll help in the activation. I go for a wall village here myself. Like I said early on, my thoughts was that it's a key split. Uh, I don't want to lose this split, at least. Anyways, um, my opponent, he gets his wolf uh, bought here. He didn't get to five on his um things three and four but I did so here I turn a silver into a walled village again bearing in mind the split and I pick up another wolf here alternatively I could have gone for remaking two coppers there and just buying the wolf but I felt like getting two villages at this point was decent and I'm doing pretty well I'm doing real well so far villages connecting with wolves not drawing remakes dead Thrilling. This is this is a dream come true, honestly. This doesn't always happen in Dominion. But it's happening here, and I'm pretty happy about it. So, uh, another estate goes out of the deck for my opponent. He actually manages to chain a bunch of stuff, which is real nice for him. Conspirator comes out, Wolf comes out, and he picks up another Wolf alongside a Patrician. A Patrician. Patrician should be decent here, especially as the deck gets better, you know, Wolves in the deck. Golds, provinces should be pretty good and they're nice to activate conspirators as well so remake here i am thinking about getting rid of my last estate uh hold back on it honestly just to put a conspirator into the deck and five here i think it's time for a jester i think it's time for a jester i could start supporting it i have the actions to do so and i would love to start gaining things out of my opponent's deck, I'll take Wolves, I'll take Villages, I'll take Conspirators, Patricians, Apprentices, I'll take all. I'll take Remakes too. He actually doesn't have a Remake. I didn't notice that until much later into the game. But I'll take all of those things. Uh, unfortunately for the remainder of this game, the Jester uh, performs underwhelmingly. Underwhelmingly. So, a bit of spoilers, but just so you know. A couple of Wall Villages here for my opponent, and... That signals to me that he is interested in the village split and he would like to make sure he, he doesn't lose that. So what I'm thinking about here is perhaps emptying the walled villages. I don't really need all the actions immediately, but 
you know, in the interest of having the action advantage over my opponent, maybe I might. So what I'm going to do here is use the remake and take, uh, I believe, what, a silver by remaking the estate and remake a silver into a walled village, I believe. I think that's the play here. So yeah, there goes the estate into the silver, the silver into the walled village, conspirator draw, I draw into the silver, excellent. Wall villages on top of the deck, fine. Now, here, I think about this. Wall village for sure is what I'm gonna buy. What am I gonna do with the five dollars? Is it going to be another jester, another wharf, another conspirator, or is it gonna be the sector, this last walled village? I eventually decide on the last wall village, taking the action advantage. I have six of the wall villages when I do so, but this is a slight misplay here. I should have bought Seaway to take the walled village. Just because Fountain is around, I would have had six wall villages, that's six extra buys. I have my default one, seven, I have two wharves, that's eight, nine. I could buy a couple more wharves, there's horse traders there too. I could easily get up to ten plus buys, and you know, in a pinch, buy ten coppers to get the fountain point. So that, I think that was a big oversight on my part. I realized it like two milliseconds after I picked up the wall village. Damn it, I could have put the Seaway token on the wall village, and that would have been quite good, I think. Just a now hits a wall village. I didn't want him to do it then, but what, whatever, what can you do? Uh, Silver gets morphed into a uh, Conspirator, I believe, and I get rid of the Copper here. So I'm real nice and thin overdrawn by a stupid amount of cards. Not a stupid amount, like a couple of cards, maybe. So what I need to start doing is putting. Um, Put in high impact cards in my deck just I think can still do good work. I'll take Conspirators, I'll take Wolves, I'll take Torture, which my opponent now has. Not at all worried about the Torture at all. So I'm really hoping that this Jester does some work. I'll, yeah, I'll take the Crazy. I could have even discarded and been safe, I felt. So look here. This is a point of realization for me in this game. Okay, so my opponent. Puts down seven coppers. He has seven coppers, I realize. Seven coppers. Then this is the point where I realized he didn't have a remake. And this is the point I realized what he's doing. He's playing for Fountain. He's playing for Fountain. He wants those ten coppers in his deck to get the extra points from the Fountain. And watch what he does from him. This is very nice play from him here. And it's over the course of a couple of turns. So he's thinking about what to do here with his nine dollars. More importantly, he's thinking about which direction to push the game into. The torturer is indicative of what he wants to do, and his buys here are also indicative of what he wants to do. There goes Patricia and Emporium. So, one pile is empty, Walled Village. Uh, the Patricians are gone, and one Emporium is gone. He gets two points from the Emporium as well, a bit of points buffer. The torturer will help empty the curses. So he is angling for a three pile, hoping to pick up coppers at an opportune moment to just suddenly increase his score to a point where I cannot catch him. And at this point, I realize that I'm in trouble. I am in big trouble. I thought I had everything under control and things were nice and dandy. I was in trouble. Yeah. Big trouble. So I go for a torturer here and an emporium. So my thoughts with the torturer was one. Okay, look, he has seven coppers. If I could start to junk him a little bit with the torturers, I know it runs down the pile, but it also junks him. It will hopefully make his turns less big. He'll have less money, he won't be able to stick wolves in play like he's doing here. Eight coppers now because I gave him one off my jester. So I was thinking, okay. Let me try to junk this man, right? Let me try to junk this man, and I'll take the Emporium because I don't really want to give him the points for the Emporium. And uh, it's also a bit of economy for me, the Emporium. It co works well with the Patrician. I also know it empties piles, but I don't know, it feels rather unsettling just to give him 10 points, and then he has all the fountain points just waiting there, plus the torture I given out curses. So, anyways, um, what I do here as well is just a look. Stop, stop it. Get me good things. Ah! Walled villages fly off the top of the deck there. Anyways, 
So what I'm going to do here now is pick up our second torture. I know he only has the apprentice for trashing. So like, if he takes two curses, trash is one as net gain for me. Maybe he'll stall at some point, buy me a turn or two. So 11 here is going to be the last Emporium. The, picking up the Emporiums here, very, very questionable, honestly. Very questionable. The torturers are less so questionable because they actually, I think they have a much greater impact than the Emporium points. So maybe it's a mistake to pick up the Emporiums, even maybe the Torturers, but that is what I end up doing. So now there are two piles empty and we have Torturers flying around. Three Torturers in total. Uh, two from my side, one from my opponent's side. Um, the discard of the Wall Villages actually hurts him a little bit here. And here I finally check Fountain and I realize it's not 10 points you get for Fountain, because I was playing around with 10 points in my head. I was thinking, okay, that's Province Duchy. If I stick some curses in his deck with Torturer, you know, that could help balance out the... Uh, slight points uh, advantage from the fountain and the emporiums that he has, but it's 15 That's two provinces on a duchy, and I don't have that kind of money to just Catch up on points with that Here's where it would have been nice to have the buys from the walled village I could have incrementally put coppers into my deck alongside my wolves to draw That would have been nice Right, that would have been very nice. A uh, conspirator for my opponent and wolf. Now here, I think my best course of action, the way I could put money into my deck the quickest is maybe with conspirators. Gold is another option. Gold is a little bit more expensive than that. I could also put seaway on the conspirators to get some um, plus buy from those. The conspirators work uh, pretty well here. There's also some argument to make here. Maybe you don't need like a, lo a lot of these plus cards cards like wolves and torturers you could instead have focused on building a conspirator chain maybe with just one or two wolves in play and really hammered on on the conspirators because that's a lot of money five six conspirators in your deck and you have a couple buys you presumably would have see radar conspirator if you had that many and not have been dumb like some people um now I have to now I'm actually holding back on giving him copper with the jester. So I hit one of his coppers and I take the copper over myself. It helps my economy a little bit. I mean I only have three of them. He has eight. I need seven to get the fountain points. He needs two. And he has what three wolves now? Things are not looking good for me here. The curses are down at six as well. I go for a wolf and two conspirators. Consideration to triple conspirator there. Uh, but I think the war from the two conspirators are good enough. The war for the draw and the plus buy. I expect to be buying green cards soon, so I don't want to stall. I was also actually very impressed at how his deck was able to draw all the cards, even though he had eight coppers in his deck. Yeah, I found that quite impressive. Didn't really understand how that worked, but apparently it did. And here's where he makes the play, right? Buys a couple coppers. Province. And I think he buys a wolf. I believe a wolf. So he sets himself up for the three pile. He could have almost three piled me here. One more dollar. Four conspirators go out the window. <laughs> Good thing I didn't buy a triple conspirator, right? So, yeah, there goes the province and a torturer, rather. So he's looking to empty the curse pile. So here, at this point, I do not want to play my torturers. And as it turns out, I could actually do without the torturers. So one comment um, Akuchi made to me after the game is that he thought I trashed too much in this game. Uh, the draw was way too strong, he felt. Uh, apparently he was right. Uh, because if I could get rid of two torturers and still draw my deck, that is, that is indicative of that fact, I feel. Couple goals. Um, I fall one short of triple province here, which is unfortunate, but I don't think it matters. And look, hey, now is where the Jester does things. And I don't want it to gain me a conspirator or anybody a conspirator at this point. But... Now it decides to do something and get me a conspirator. So I go for a couple provinces and Duchy is losing, Wolf is losing because all he needs is maybe to get me to take a couple curses or just to find enough money for the conspirators and he wins. So this is really elegantly played by Akuchi here. He set himself up for the fountain, he realized there was enough draw on the board to support the 10 coppers and he forced the game into a situation where it would free pile with him having the points advantage largely from the fountain. Largely from the fountain. So I shouldn't have discarded that, I should have just taken the curse. But that's a minor misplay in the grand scheme of things. 
So he finishes the game off here on the Conspirators, and that is game two to my opponent. Very nicely done. 